Now this first question got sent to the wrong email But since he's new here I'm going to give him this one pass and one pass only It came from my guy Greg B He said Just wanted to let you know Big fan of the channel Watch it almost daily I'm not a subscriber Don't ask me why I should be But I watch it on my TV And it's set to guest mode But I just might be too lazy to log in and subscribe Hey It's all good man I, I, I appreciate you watching <laughs> And I, I appreciate the honesty too Thank you for that And thank you for the lazy comment Because I, I be getting lazy with a lot of stuff too So I feel you on that Anyway As I said I'm a fan of watching channel almost daily I've been a Raven fan Before they even came to Baltimore When the Browns left Cleveland I followed them to Baltimore Alright so he been rocking with them Before they were even them uh, I was watching today's show and I noticed one of your questions from subs brought up John Harbaugh And if the Ravens don't get to the AFC championship game Should he be fired? Uh, this clicked and made me realize There have been many episodes on your show Where fans or even yourself Have put Harbaugh on the hot seat Not Hayden But it made me think about Why do we say these things about Harbaugh But no noise ever comes out of Pittsburgh on Tomlin Tomlin has one Super Bowl win, same as Harbaugh. In fact, other than not having a losing season, their resumes are almost identical. Sean Payton only has one Super Bowl. Never heard of him being on a hot seat. Pete Carroll, etc. Well, first, because we talk about Ravens. We, like that. we talk about Ravens like 99% of the time on here. We talk about Ravens every single day of the year. So that's why, I mean, we ain't really worried about Tomlin, Carroll, um, Sean Payton. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's why. I mean, simple answer. That's it. Cause we talk, we we, we talking about the Ravens, um, and he also said, just just want to know your thoughts because Harbaugh is in a very unique group of coaches, with one being the, uh, with one of the longest tenors with one team, uh, Belichick, Payton, Tomlin, Harbaugh, Roundup. Uh, top of the four of active coaches uh, Harbaugh operates the most dominant run offense in the league Even Brian Billick said Super Bowl year 2000 Our strategy, run the ball down the opponent's throats and unleash our defense See, you see what you just said though Let's read that again Even Brian Billick said Super Bowl year 2000 That was 22 years ago our strategy, run the ball down opponent's throats and unleash our defense. Baltimore has never been a pass-first offense, so really Harbaugh is doing a fantastic job. If run-first won't win you a Super Bowl nowadays, then wouldn't it be more effective to talk about the shift the organization needs to take rather than putting it on Harbaugh? Harbaugh is part of the reason. I've been, I've been saying this. I said that, yeah, Harbaugh is a big part of the reason, too. I said it, but, but I also said it's a philosophy thing. And I've also said that it starts from the top down. It starts from the top. We said this before. We can't just put it all on. Harbaugh is a big part of it, especially because he's the one that hires the offensive coordinators, the defensive coordinators and whatnot. He's a huge part of it, but it starts at the top. So, yeah, Harbaugh is huge in it. So is Eric DaCosta. Bashadi, I think Bashadi just like, hey, I got the money. I, I, I'll pay y'all. Y'all do whatever. Y'all take care of it. Uh, but so that's why I think it starts at Eric DaCosta and Harbaugh. Those are the main two. Philosophy change. We've been saying that for a long time, man. So, yeah, that's, that's that. Anyway, he said, just some observations. Hope you were in the fam all good. Love the channel. Hey, I, I, I appreciate it, Greg. But, yeah, that, that's all it is, man. That's all it is. So you, you, you saying the same thing we've been saying. So we on the same page. Next question came from my boy, Sean. Oh, my, my dog ain't sent an He ain't sent an email in a minute, but I know he always bring it. I appreciate you, Sean, man. Got a lot of love for you. I appreciate you a lot, man. Anyway, he said, yo, what's up, Engraving? Long time no chit-chat. See, he knew. He said, long time no chit-chat. Hope all is well with you and the fam. Uh, we both on the grind, but I still watch every day, though. Appreciate it, man. Uh, I, I was at the Ravens practice at Ravens Stadium, and let's look at the big picture here. The Ravens have the two best wide receiver coaches in the league in T. Martin and Keith Williams. And let's not forget, Jerry Rice came from uh, Tennessee State as a nobody and became the greatest of all time. I believe the Ravens are counting on the coaching staff to bring the best out of the wide receivers that they have. Uh, let's not forget the words from uh, the man, uh, oh, from Lamar Jackson and Hollywood Brown. We have some dogs in this room, and I believe in them, and they just need a chance. I believe if the Ravens keep what they have inside, uh, one of those big undrafted guys, I see big things in the future because if Lamar believes in them, like he says he does, uh, then we should believe in them. 
Everybody, including myself, wants the big flashy receiver. But I've been, uh, ra- I've been raving since '96. They never value wide receivers. Our first top flight receiver was Michael Jackson. Nobody even knows who he is. Uh, I'm saying that to say this: I believe they hired T. Martin uh, and Keith Williams to develop what they drafted and make something out of them. Because let's remember, Devonte Adams. Uh, he wasn't Devontae Adams until he worked with Keith Williams. But Keith Williams works exclusively uh, with the Ravens now. And I believe uh, in Tylen Wallace, Devin DuVernay, James Prochet, uh, and, and Rashad Bateman. He made me believe in the games that he played with three different quarterbacks. I'm saying that to say this. I believe they hired T and Keith uh, to develop what they drafted and make something out of them. Because let's remember, Devontae at all. Oh, it's, it's okay. I don't know why the uh, the email is repeating itself right there. That's weird. Um, anyway, uh, he said it's good to talk about and dream about a DK Metcalf who is officially signed now. So congratulations, DK, uh, and all these other guys uh, like a Debo too who's officially signed now. Congratulations, Debo. Um, and let's not forget EDC tried to draft Jameson Williams, but they took him a play or two ahead uh, of our pick. So he just didn't give up on the wide receiver group. Every time we picked, they took. What or oh, they took all we wanted, like one or two picks beforehand. See, with that, um, I, I he tried. There's a lot of trying, there, there's a lot of trying. Um, and hey, kudos to trying, but you you gotta get it done, you gotta get it done because I like, and, and I've heard about the whole Jameson Williams thing before. Um, it's like, hey, oh, they they tried to get Jameson Williams, they tried to get. Uh, was it Calvin White um, But if you really like And I know things happen Surprises happen or whatnot. But if you really feel like That is a guy That could be a difference maker A huge difference maker for your team You had 10 draft picks 10 draft picks This was obviously before the Hollywood trade um, But you had 10 draft picks You could have threw some in there And, and moved up a little bit to, to go get that guy um, but anyway, he said, I also believe that before we picked, uh, Jalen Amore Davis, EDC wanted to draft Kobe Bryant, who was the, uh, cornerback of the year in college football. So being a fan of the Ravens since the inception of the team, I believe in the route they're going and I'm willing to support. I think we'll all be okay with what we have just as long as Lamar signs the contract. And yeah, I agree with you. No hometown discount. Get your money, little brother. Uh, you keep up the good work cause I watch you every day and you're getting large, uh, Tell the family, I said, hey, let's have a little more belief in the roster that we have because the rain was, uh, the Ravens was going to sign one of them uh, 6'3 or 6'4 guys, and they will make an impact. But I believe what we have already will make an impact. Peace out, bro. See you next time. Be more. P.S. I was looking for you at the, pra- at the practice at Raven Stadium, but it was a lot of people. Uh, then after the fireworks, I had to bounce. Uh, y'all be good. Hey, appreciate you, man. I, I could tell this was a. Uh, Ooh, this was uh, you did the voice the voice to text, cause uh, ooh, this was this was this was a tough one right here, uh, but we we got everything that you were saying. Um, the text ain't get it all, but we we understood it anyway. Um, the belief in the guys that the Ravens have, um, I, I just I hope that it's it's real belief, because what the the Ravens have done it seems um it's like like it with them trying to draft a uh a, a, a jameson williams and trying to draft a, a, a calvin white well i feel like that's not his name the one that the steelers got the little small receiver the small fast receiver that steelers got um if you try to get it's, it's easy to try to get somebody and then if it doesn't work out be like oh no well i ain't really want them anyway we, we believe in the guys that we got and it's like, oh, okay. You believe in the guys that you got, but you still try to get this guy. Um, and I, I, I wouldn't have no problem with that. Because, again, me, I say the more quality, the better. Because um, that's what I'm all about. Quality, quality, quality. Um, improve on the quality. Get the best that you can for your quarterback. Um, so, I mean, we'll see. I mean, I, I feel like uh, they got no choice. I mean, they, they're not going to say we don't believe in the receivers that we got. But yeah, as far as the T. Martin and Keith Williams, they they were brought in for that specific reason, and that's something that I had been uh, clamoring for for years. 
um, for the Ravens to bring in some wide receiver, some new wide receiver coaches that that got good experience, that got good resumes, that have good track records, um, so they can really try to get the most out of uh, Ravens receivers. Um, so there's there's a lot riding on this year. I um y'all know me personally. I, I would I wouldn't prefer to go the experimental route uh, with Ravens wide receivers. I can understand why a lot of fans want to though, because a lot of fans are like hey need to give our own guys a shot. Um, we need to do that. Give our young guys a shot. And if this was uh 2019, I could understand that. Cause I was on that same thing. Hey, get the young guys a shot, man. Let them grow with Lamar. And Hollywood obviously grew with Lamar. He got better every year. Um, and, and I th- and of course I know somebody gonna be oh Hollywood had all those drops with the Ravens offense. Since it is a run first offense, um, they were not a pass first offense. I mean last year uh, they were a little bit, but Ravens are a, a a run first offense. So what that means is that well them in that particular situation. Um, since they don't pass the ball that much, whenever they do pass the ball, everything that they do in the passing game is going to get emphasized a lot. It's going to get em- emphasized a lot, and with that, um, everything is gonna—it's just going to get blown up so much more. And that's good or bad. Um, that's why people talk about Hollywood's drops, and they were bad drops. I mean, no drop is a good drop. Um, but Hollywood's drops were blown out of proportion because of the Ravens' offense, the type of offense that they run. If he was in a different type of offense and had, what, he had like five, six drops last year, I think, nobody would really be sweating it because of, but it's because of the volume. It's because of the volume. Since Ravens are a low-volume team, then every drop, it hurts Ravens that much more. They're a low-pass low, low volume team. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's part of the business, though. Um... But yeah, man. I uh, if if it was, this was 2019, I would've been like, hey, yeah, roll with the young guys. But the the biggest reason, and I've said this a lot of times, the biggest reason for me that I, I just I would love for them to get, or would have love for them to get a proven guy, is because of the situation. Lamar Jackson contract year. Ravens. They they got a, They got another special team right now. They got another very special. That their roster is set up so nice. It's set up so nice, and and I feel like they so if they stay healthy, they so close, man. I feel like they are so close, and I just feel like like you should really just go in for it, man. Go for it, go for it. Try to be the best of the best that you possibly can to really try to get over that hump. And I, I feel like it's just, in my opinion, I feel like it's just too much riding on this year, right here, right now, for them to be like, I right, yeah, we'll, we'll test our we'll test our young receivers out. We'll test it out. And again, I hope they do. I hope they do a phenomenal job. I really do. Um, but I, I just that, that's why I, I would I just would love for them to go out and get somebody who's like that already. Not somebody who has to prove themselves. Not somebody who we hope works out. And we could, of course, hope all the Ravens and receivers work out. But that's my reasoning, man. Uh, Cause I and I get I get all the people saying, "Hey, no, this this our time to get a young receivers a chance. This this their time." Da 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 da. And it, it could work out in a different way. You could look at it a different way. You could be like, hey, well, these receivers, the NFL doesn't know about these receivers. So that's a good thing. Because they, they got a little bit of film on them and whatnot, but they ain't got tendencies. They ain't got a bunch of guys who got over 1,000 yards or whatnot. They, they don't have that. All these guys are young, unproven guys, and, and the NFL does not really know about them like that. So you could, look, you could look at it like that way and be like, oh, these receivers, they could shock the world. And hopefully they do. Hopefully they do. Up. We'll see, man. We'll see. This I, I I just feel like it's just it's so it's so risky, but it's a different type of risky. But we'll see. Hope, hopefully it pays off, man. Whatever they end up doing, hopefully it pays off. And and I'm I'm hoping my boy Shamar Bridges makes the roster. Just had to throw that in there. Ooh, bad habits. Next question came from my boy Kevin. He said, I'm a Lamar Jackson fan. I'm originally from Louisville and have been watching him since freshman year in college. My question is, why has Lamar picked up this bad habit of touching his towel when the play is a pass? Does touching his towel when it's a run, uh, can co- can a coach or someone tell Lamar to touch his towel every play? Or don't touch it at all, shaking my head? What are your thoughts? And he said, Kentucky Cobb is coming again soon. Man, you know what? I... I I think I might have heard of this before a while back, but I'm just not aware of this. I, I gotta I gotta watch for that now. 
I gotta watch for that now to see if that's true, cause that's something that's scary to think about. I'm a, I'm gonna I'm look for that. I'm a, I'm gonna try to put this in the back of my mind. Well, really, somewhere in the middle. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to keep this in mind. Uh, next time I'll watch Lamar because that's something that I just I I didn't know about. So hopefully that's not the case. Uh, cause that would give it away. Um, I don't oh I don't know man. <laughs> I, I gotta watch out for that I, I appreciate you putting us on though if, if that's accurate We all gonna be watching out for it now Next question Came from my guy Rave Kingdom He said what's up Engraven Hope you and the family are well Hey we doing really good I appreciate it Justin Houston When the Ravens picked him up last season I felt it was a great decision But he also showed us He, <laughs> he said he also showed us He lost a step Well yeah He ain't, he ain't a young boy no more That's why they call him Yoda Yoda's old with all this knowledge And whatever But anyway I, I think he's a wonderful veteran player On our team What are your expectations From Justin Houston um, to sort of bridge the gap uh, between um, him and to, to sort of help transition the young guys, the young up and coming pass rushes, the Dalen Hayes, the Adafe Aways, the Tyus Bowsers, the possibly Malik Harrison, but him to sort of be there and be like, hey, <clears throat> let me show you all some stuff. I, I still got some moves in me and whatnot. He was really good against the run last year. Um, and he, he got a lot of almost sacks, too. But um. And, and he'll be another year with the Ravens, another year more comfortable with the personnel and whatnot. And I, I just think he'll – and I think the Ravens view him as somebody who can not only be a player but also be a coach. So they get like a little two-for-one deal, like a little bowl go buy one, get one. You, you get what I'm saying. Next question came from Chef Carter. He said, what's up, Engraven? Just wanted to let you know you're doing a wonderful job. Just want to give you your flowers, man. We ain't doing nothing special over here, but I, I appreciate you supporting the channel, man. How do you feel about this year's Ravens? We got a lot of depth at DB, O-line, and tight end. Yeah, they do get a lot of it. So they're going to have to make some tough decisions. Not at tight end. Um, O-line, not really. Like a little bit. Um, but anyway, he said, uh, from what I see, we're going to be better at wide receivers. Something about Key and T, they make things better. Better for us uh, if we can stay healthy. Where do you see the season going? <laughs> it's funny, especially with that. Uh, the second question from this episode. Uh, thanks for all you do, good brother. Lamar Jackson going to do big things this year. Looking real good. One more month for the season. Let's get it. Mm. Hey, I am um, right now I got Ravens at AFC Championship. Uh, but again, like I always say, I, I hope they prove me all the way wrong. Um, I, again, the only thing that holds me back from putting them in the Super Bowl is just the unknown at wide receiver. So I, I just really hope that these guys emerge. And if the Ravens are going to roll with the guys that they got, all right, let's get it. Let's let's see who shows out. Let's hope that they show out. Let's hope that they stay healthy. Uh, Devin Duvernay, the other – see, this, this was what I was talking about. And I know it wasn't nothing serious, or well, hopefully not. But Devin Duvernay, the other day at the open, at the open practice – Devin Duvernay ran into Chuck Clark Well, he was trying to get a catch Chuck Clark was trying to get a pick They ran into each other Their knees collided And I was looking like, oh boy Chuck Clark got right up Devin Duvernay, he got up after a couple of seconds um, But th this is why I just It's another reason Why I had one of them to just go grab somebody For some, some quality person Not just, oh, we're just going to get somebody for depth But quality uh, depth But um, we'll see, man uh, they, they got a lot to prove uh, and you know, like this, this it can go in the Ravens' favor because it, I know, like for me, I, I mean, I, we ain't special with anything, but it's it's um. There's been a, a lot of times um, in my life when <clears throat> I felt like I and and I, so I could see where the, the, it could benefit these receivers. Um, there's been a lot of times, especially like at at, at past jobs and stuff. Um, where I felt like, man, like I, I can do this. I, I know I could do this. I know I'm capable of it. I know I can make this thing happen. But I got overlooked. They end up giving a position to somebody else. They end up being, oh no, no, you. Uh, I either didn't get hired. There was a promotion that I might not have gotten. So, something like that. Um. So it and it was frustrating. It, it was very, very, very frustrating. Cause I'm like, I, I know I could do it. Why they ain't like? Why they ain't choosing me for it? And it would hurt. There were, there were times when it it would hurt. Um, so I guess the the receivers they could look at it like that too. A lot of people have been doubting them. Like, like me, I haven't really been doubting them, but I just been questioning them. 
uh, questioning like, hey, is this gonna work? Because again, I, I would rather something proven. But hey, if they if they're gonna roll with that, then they could take all the doubt and all the questioning that people have been doing to them, and they could take that and be like, hey, let, let's let's go show the world, man. When we do get an opportunity, we're gonna show the world, and I I can understand that because again, the, with those opportunities that I missed out on, now looking back at it. Um, I'm glad things worked out the way that they did because maybe had I got that promotion, had I got that job, that opportunity, then we probably wouldn't be doing this. So just something to think about. And I got to keep that in mind, too, whenever I think about uh, the Ravens wide receivers, uh, because I'm sure they have that that same mindset.